Hey everyone, this is a Black Manga Critic here with another video for Manga Monday. Now basically this is going to be a review, spoiler free, of Kimetsu no Yaiba. Now, a quick shout out to Naka Manga for the suggestion. And I want you guys to look in the description box and follow him on Twitter and subscribe to the YouTube page. Because he gave me a suggestion for a great, great battle show in the manga and I'm really thankful to him for it. So, follow him. Also, when you do follow him and when you do subscribe to the YouTube channel, look out for his video on Akita Toriyama's works. Now, it's basically just like, you know, him sort of uh, talking um, a little bit about each work, when it comes out, um, sort of a little bit of, um, you know, its significance and things of that nature. And it's just a really good video. Um, I learned a lot. I haven't read everything by Toriyama. But now I want to really go out and read things other than Dr. Slump, Dragon Ball, um, you know, uh, Dragon Ball, the Dragon Ball series, and um, Sandland. So I want to read other things by Akira Toriyama because of that video. So check him out. Obviously, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that notification button. Follow me on Twitter. Like the page on Facebook. You know the drill. So basically, if we're going to talk about Kimetsu no Yaiba, we have to talk about um, you know, right, the story as a battle shonen and why it works, and the art um, in terms of the, ba the battle shonen um, sort of you know, tropes and archetypes and things like that, and why the art supports those um, tropes and archetypes. So basically, um, the protagonist of Kimetsu no Yaiba is really, um, you know, obviously a focal point, but I think he's a good focal point because he sort of reminds you of um, characters that, you know, um, sort of slowly grow, um, but then when they do hit that sort of exponential growth, you really um, feel for them because you've sort of traveled with them through a bunch of chapters as they sort of incrementally grown. And when they do sort of hit that um, sort of precipice, when they do sort of hit that, uh, you know, when they break that sort of barrier or whatever in um, a crucial sort of moment, it's it's really sort of fulfilling to the reader. And I'm just sort of reminded of um, characters sort of like um, um, Sawada um, Tsunayoshi, right, from Ki um, uh, Katayeko um, Hitman Reborn, right? Like, it's sort of, like, this manga sort of reminds me of that in the sense that Hitman Reborn starts very sort of slow in, in the sense of like, right, the pacing is kind of slow. It's very comedic at first. We, um, but we also watch Suna grow as a character through those sort of comedic moments, right? And then when, um, um, if you if you read Hitman Reborn, right, you know like when the when the story really hits, when he hits that sort of like not pinnacle, but when he breaks through and he gets that sort of a ability. You know what I'm talking about if you've read it and if you've um, watched it. So there's something like there's a very similar sort of thing that happens with this manga and. When it does happen in Kimetsu no Yaiba, and when it does happen for Tanjiro, you're really um, sort of not only um, happy for him, but it's very um, not like it's very realistic, right? Like the growth is very incremental, and when it does happen, it's not sort of like some sort of uh, day ex machina or something. I think the the manga go, um, go to get like really um, describes why this, these things happen and why that particular things happen, um, right? And and like I like it. I think it works very well. So. If anything, you should check out the manga simply for the very wonderful incremental sort of growth that happens um, with the character Tanjiro. And the fact that the mangaka doesn't, you know, move things too fast, um, right? Like things happen in a way that they need to happen. Um, and, you know, it's not too fast and it's not too slow. That's what I like about it. It's good pacing. Um, you know, I don't ever really get bored necessarily. I think, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the art later, but I think some people have an issue with the art. Um... And, you know, that might be a reason why people get bored um, very quickly while they're, you know, um, reading this manga. But in terms of the story, I think the story is very good and Tanjiro works great as a protagonist. I think the one thing um, also that uh, this Battle Shonen does really well is that it sort of says, okay, we're going to take the tropes of Battle Shonen and we're not going to necessarily um, do anything that's like super groundbreaking. But I think the one thing that I appreciate about Battle Shonen that have come out recently is that they're clearly working to, you know, um, fine-tune what works for Battle Shonen, right? So moves um, cl are clearly used as metaphors in Kimetsu no Yaiba, right? Um, you know, there, there's training, things like that. But the battles are always very interesting. They're always very interesting to watch. You want to follow them. You want to pay attention to the move by move. And this is something that, like, a good Battle Shonen has to do. It has to choreograph a fight very well. And I think that Kimetsu no Yaiba choreographs um, fights very well. Like I said, I'm not going to spoil anything in terms of how the battles work or anything like that, but I appreciate the battles. 
I think the battles work very well. They develop the protagonist, to, um, Tanjiro, in a great way. They develop other um, supporting characters in a great way. And it just continues um, to do that. And it sort of, you know, um, increases as the manga, you know, goes on. As it's been um, serialized for longer and longer, right? And the manga can sort of, you know, do more um, based on the popularity of uh, the manga. So what I will say is that there's one instance, um, and I'm not going to tell you uh, uh, which chapter it is or anything like that, but there's one instance in which um, the mangaka uh, has a protagonist go through a sort of um, a, um, a sort of like battle, right? And most protagonists are always about to die or something like that. But there's one moment, and it really, really like boom! It just hit me. Um, I wrote it down because it was so it was so um, great. And basically, the mangaka says that when um, a character's uh, life is flashing before their eyes. It's not because of some sort of emotional attachment um, to particular moments um, or, or what they're going or they're thinking about what they're going to miss or anything like that. It's because particularly in Battle Shonen, those characters, when their lives are flashing before their eyes, are looking for um, an instance in their life that could help them win the battle or, um, and, and survive in that moment. So that was like brilliant writing to me because I had never seen that. Um, I'd never seen that. Um, sort of phenomena explained that way before. And that's one of those things that's like a real gem. You see a lot, a lot of gems like that in Kometsu no Yaiba. You just see little little things that really like, damn, like, damn, that's really good. Like this guy, like this, like this, like this person can write. You know what I mean? Like you see that time and time again. And that's what keeps you coming back. Those little gems, those moments where you really feel not only for the protagonist, but for other characters um, and even like the villains. And like, right, and you know that the villains are going to be Oni, I've already said that. But that's something that's very, very, um, you know, telling for a battle shonen. If you are going to write a good battle shonen, you have to have characters that um, not only um, the reader can relate to on the sort of hero side, but characters that you, um, the reader can relate to on the villain side. So you have to have that balance. Otherwise, it just it just kind of reads like bleach. Like, you don't, you don't really relate to... You know, um, eyes in any in any way necessarily, or you don't really relate to um, you um, um, Yukiora or any of the um, Espada or anything like that necessarily. Maybe maybe Grimjaw, but even then, eh, you know, it's they're, they're just very hollow. But that hollow um, this doesn't exist in Kimetsu no Yaiba. Everything is very very particular and very well done. I mean, those moments, like I said, those gems happen. They're very good. So to get a little bit into um, the art. One thing I want to say about the art is that it very much so accentuates how battle shonen um, battles and the moves that are used within those battles always act as metaphors, right? Um, or at least if a good battle shonen um, uses move, right, like uses the moves and um, and battles, um, right, those moves and battles are going to be, um, you know, uh, used as metaphors. So a bad battle shonen won't do that, but this is a good battle shonen. So it does that, and it does that really beautifully, I think. I think the art does put some people off in a lot of ways, but I think that's partly because, like, if you read, like, a scantillation or something, the scantillation is just going to be worse than, like, let's say if you read it on, like, um, a clean, like, a really clean scan on, like, a good website or um, the Viz, like, versions or whatever, if you can get those. But basically, I would suggest that, like, you try to read um, uh, Kimetsu no Yaiba either on from like the Viz website if you can like afford that or find a really really good website um that has like the uh scantillations things like that and, and and read it from there so that's um but I will but also what I will say about the art is that like uh there's just certain moments where the battles really sort of flow it's like a, like I said it's like it's like there's like it's like a choreography and the fight choreography is really really impeccable I think and that and you want to follow what's happening in the fight you never sort of want to avert your eyes. When you're turning the page to the next, um, right, you, when you turn the page, you're like, okay, what's happening next? And that's very clear. Everything that happens is very clear within these battles. Uh, so when you go into Kometsu no Yaiba, expect good battles and battles that have meaning behind them. Every battle has some sort of meaning behind it um, when it's done. And even from the get-go, I think that the, re the um, um, Gotoge really surprises you, right? And, and I think he surprises you very much so in the way that it's sort of um, um, Ahoda Koshi surprises you in, um, Boku no Hiro Academia. So I would check it out for, if simply for that, because it really sort of reminded me of the first time I started reading Boku no Hiro, like, years ago when it first came out, 
in, in manga form. And I was like, you know what? It started off kind of slow and it does what, and, and there's a progression. It's a very similar thing that happens, right? In the way that Hitman Reborn has a slow progression, in the way that Boku no Hero has a slow progression, and in the way that this manga has a slow progression. But that progression matters because it really builds up the use of um, battles and the moves within battles as metaphors and important metaphors to the story and just to us as readers, you know? So really, really think the art is great. And I think that like you have to watch, no, sorry, you don't, you don't have to watch, like you have to read the manga on a very well scanned um, like um, website or page or whatever. So, you know, don't go to one of those bullshit like manga, um, you know, sites that have like crappy scans or whatever. Because that's not the way to read this manga. So I guess lastly, I just want to quickly talk about um, the sort of support characters. And so it's just going back to like story and battle shonen and stuff like that. But really good battle shonen have really good support characters, right? They're sort of the bread and butter of why you're reading. You're not just reading, you don't want to just see the protagonist do A, B, C, D, E, F, G the whole way through. This story really isn't about that. Um, it's always about like his interactions with um, other with other characters, um, how they influence um, um, Tanjiro, how Tanjiro influences them. That's all really good stuff, and I and, and I enjoy it because like you see him um, sort of not only grow as a character, but you see more of um, the layers to him of how he's sort of like you know um, I want I want to say very much so it's kind of like a mixture of like Yo and Yo and sort of Suna, in a sense, that, like, they're both very, like, you know, like, they are pure-hearted, um, but they're not really, like, uh, rash or, um, really sort of, like, ridiculous or, 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 you know, or not necessarily, like, um, um, dumb. Like, they're very intuitive, very insightful, um, when, uh, they need to be, um, and they're very just, like, kind-hearted and, and, and pure in the way that, like, isn't kind of annoying in the way that sort of, like, Luffy's kind of pure, but that's a lot of that has to sort of do with like how stupid he is and stuff like that. You know what I mean? So I think there's a lot to um, Tanjiro as a as a character and the support characters who also have um, really decent like depth to them. And the more you see them, the more you really um, become become attached to them. And they're just really funny moments. Like support characters can be very funny at times, and the humor is very good. And I think um, Gotenk is very good at humor. So you know when you're reading it, expect um, a decent amount of humor. Because it's good, and it's good stuff. So look out for that. So yeah, that's pretty much my review of Kimetsu no Yaiba. If you want to talk more about it, um, and I'm sure some of you do, you know, you can find me on Twitter. Um, you know, you can, like, I think you can send me a private message on Twitter or whatever. So if you want to, be, if you want to do that and you want to have a discussion that way, we can do that. But also comment down below because that's also a really good way to get into contact with me. Um, you know, I'm pretty sure Nakamanga is going to comment down below in the section because he loves this manga, so we're going to have a chat about that. So if you want to join in, on that, join in on that chat down below, please feel free to do so. But if you also, you know, worried about spoilers or anything like that, then don't look down in the comment section. Um, you know, you can always just find me on Twitter, find me on Facebook, um, or just, you know, shoot me an email or whatever if you want to have a chat or whatever, you know, a G-chat or something like that. Feel free to contact me however you want. So... I'm the Black Manga Critic, here with another Manga Monday review um, of Kimetsu no Yaiba, and I'm out.